Oh, the Killer Cross situation. I've been avoiding talking about it here at the Impact Lounge because I like Impact. I like Cross. It's uh, so ugly, but we're going to talk about it in three, two, one. Let's do it. Hey everybody, I am BQ and this is the Impact Lounge. It's the number one channel for the Impact Wrestling fans, so you definitely want to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you're a big supporter of the Impact Lounge and the content that I put out, which I promise you is going to continue to get better and better and more professional as the days pass. I've really avoided talking about the Killer Cross situation here on the channel because I, I like Cross so much. You know, he was um, my favorite wrestler. You know, there's probably three or four guys I could call my favorite wrestler at any time within Impact. And, and he was a guy that was up there for a really long time. So uh, it wasn't really something I wanted to talk about because I don't want to shed any negativity on Cross. And then I met him a few weeks ago. I'm super nice guy. So I have nothing negative to say about him. Obviously, I do what I do here with the Impact Lounge YouTube channel in the best interest of Impact Wrestling and the fans. So a bit of a rock and a hard place. It sucks to see something this ugly playing out. Um, with, a, with a wrestler that I think most of us really, really like and most of us really thought should have been in the world title picture, should have got a really good push. He did get a good push. In, in my opinion, as, as a fan watching the show, I thought he was protected very well. Uh, there was a couple matches, you know, the, the four-way matches with Moose and Cage and, and Impact that I would have kind of kept them out of. But aside from that, I thought his character has been handled pretty well for the most part on the show. And I think he'll even tell you that as well. I don't think he had... From what I've seen, he's been pretty open and candid about things. He hasn't had issues with Impact Creative. It was more to do with the pay side of things. And in the pinned comment of this video, you can check out my last upload where I talked about the rumor about Impact Stars not getting paid for their merch and did a little myth busting with that. An article came out with Impact's side of the story. Now this wasn't didn't come directly from management. It's basically the people surrounding management, surrounding the company, maybe some rumors that came from the workers, but basically what everyone feels with the cross thing is that it's a no-win situation for Impact Wrestling itself, because if they put him on TV and push him and he leaves the company, well, that makes him no different than some of these other guys that they've pushed in the past. They don't want to put him on TV and bury him because that's, that's not a good look for them either. Seems they're trying to set the precedence that if you come to Impact Wrestling and you sign a contract, you cannot just ask to go. You're going to honor that contract. And that's basically, Cross is basically the guinea pig in all this. He's the scapegoat in all this. I don't think it's anything personal towards him. The Anthem is trying to set a standard because you've, we've seen it in the past. We saw it, um, I mean, Laurel Van Ness is the first name that comes to mind. Wins the Knockouts Championship, goes into management's office, pretty much that, that week of the tapings and asked for her release. They denied her, they kept her around for a while, but then they ultimately released her and that was a really bad look for the company. And then we saw a couple other stars that had asked to be released and they were given their release. The thing with us as fans of Impact, we cannot stand that. That drives us absolutely crazy when guys come in and they're gone before we know it, especially when they just ask to go. And we're seeing this in sports a little bit, especially in the NBA into the player entitlement era where you know, a player saying, I don't want to play here anymore. I know I'm signed here for the next couple seasons, but I'm demanding that you trade me. Those are things we're seeing more and more of. And it's clear Impact is just trying to make an example out of Killer Cross. And I really don't think it's anything negative towards him. I don't think it's, it's personal towards him, but it, it sucks for us as fans because we do like him. This was someone that, you know, we thought was going to be a major star in the company. And I think that Anthem, Anthem feels like, hey, before we brought you on, you know, not that many people knew who you were, and now we brought you, and now people understand you, now these other companies want you. Now, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's totally true. I mean, I was familiar with him first from the Global Force Wrestling Am tapings, Then obviously he did, he's done AAA, he's done Lucha Underground, I believe he's done Japan as well, New Japan, um, or, or at least one of the companies out there. But I think it's really important that both sides you know, try to come to an agreement, some kind of understanding that's going to be beneficial because it's a bad look for Impact anytime they get into something like this with a worker. And we're, we're in this place where us as the Impact fans, we always take the side of the company and then the people who aren't really Impact fans take the side of the wrestler, whether they follow them or not, whether they follow their career, knew anything about them. You know, that's always the way it works, but it's still a really ugly thing to happen around Bound for Glory. And I, I'm, I can't appreciate not putting him on TV for the sake of burying him. But if he, if he is on a per-appearance deal, 
then they are they are hurting him. They are hurting his pocket. They are hurting his ability to get paid. If they're taking his merchandise down. You know, I bought the Killer Cross shirt off the website. I bought some of his pro wrestling t-shirts. Um, I'll probably go buy another one here pretty soon just to support the guy because I do like him. He met, you know, we met him. He met my kids. He was super nice. He was very easy to talk to. And they did release Scarlett Bordeaux, but Scarlett was in a really weird place with the company where she was, you know, I would imagine her appearance. I mean, they complained about, I shouldn't say complain, I'm sorry, but they talked about her pay and that it wasn't as high as they would have liked to have seen it. But she was in a really weird place with the company because she was, they were building her up very, very slowly. She didn't wrestle for a very long time. And then she came in and she did the intergender stuff, which is crazy because they're almost crediting Tessa for this intergender stuff. But really, Scarlett was the one who came in and was doing intergender wrestling from day one with the company. She wasn't even wrestling in the knockouts division. I think on a Impact Plus show, she might have done a couple with, with the knockouts. But for the most part, she was wrestling the dudes for the whole time. And she was someone that he really could have built into a legitimate star. So I can see with her, like, hey, you know, I'm becoming very popular. You know, I think I deserve to be paid more, but she was probably on such a loose contract that it was very easy to let her out of her deal. She has since had a tryout with NXT, which, you know, good for her. Hopefully that works out for her. Hopefully that helps the financial situation or whatever it is uh, she's looking to achieve. But I think that is good for her. She's, she's also a talent that I think most of us liked very much. Uh, but she was in a weird place too, because she kind of came in as a heel, got really, really popular, had to turn baby face, and then they tried to kind of bring her back to heel direction, wasn't quite working, and that's when she announced herself as the winner of the, uh, the talent search, and then um, she was just still too popular, so they started pairing her with Falaba, and, you know, creative never, I wouldn't say they never really knew what to do with Scarlett, I think they knew what they wanted to do with her, it's just that the fans wanted something different. And her and Cross probably would have been a good package to put together on television, maybe somebody else will do it. I don't know, uh, but when Cross is eventually let out of his contract, I was I was told October, and then I read today December, so I don't really know. Contracts is something I do not dig into, but hopefully, you know, he gets his release sooner than later. I would love to see him in AEW. Um, every time someone reports to the the training center in NXT, whatever the hell they call it, I know I'm never going to see him wrestle again. You know, so now I'm always hoping, hey, these free agents end up in AEW. Or maybe they start doing something, you know, with NWA or just sticking on the indies. But definitely leave your thoughts in the comments about the cross situation. Um, he's saying that Impact's rest Impact Wrestling's side of the story is bullshit. You know, he said it started with pay issues where he wasn't getting what he was supposed to when he was supposed to. And I think, you know, don't quote me on this. I don't know. I haven't asked him. I think that has to do with the merchandise more than his actual pay. Because I was just told yesterday that Anthem is phenomenal about paying talent on time, that they're really good about it, that there's that it's a really big change from what they were used to before. So I have to think the merchandise is the irky part about this, not the actual talent pay when they're performing on episodes of Impact. But yes, I am BQ. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for checking out the Impact Lounge. As always, talk to you soon. Peace.